Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about our third winter forecast for the winter of 2020 to 2021. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do think weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, outside of the obvious ones, like the Rockies, which region do you think is going to see the most snowfall this winter? The Northeast, the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley... Uh, maybe the upper Midwest areas like that. Where do you think is going to see the most active snowstorm track? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now, if you like the video and leave a comment with your location, I'm going to be going through and picking some of those and replying and giving you guys a written forecast. So be sure to do that before you watch the video. Let's get into this video and we're first off taking a look at our precipitation forecast. And as you can see, for a lot of the southern United States, there's more dry than normal conditions expected. This used to just be for the southwestern United States, but as a La Nina has become more and more likely, we've extended that more for the southeast. There is not going to be a very active nor'easter storm track, which means a little less precipitation down there for the deep south and the southeast. Very typical in this type of pattern. So I decided to make that extension. I think that was a really good move. All right, now let's take a look at the moderately below average precipitation, which is still reserved for the southwest, California, southern Nevada, Arizona, southern New Mexico, and then southwestern Texas, all are expecting some moderately below average precipitation. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the above average precipitation, which might mean more snowfall as well. All right, now let's take a look at that above average precipitation. And as you can see, it takes up a very large area of the United States. Again, this is just one of those things that's very, very typical in a La Nina that northern United States storm track is very active from the Pacific Northwest through the Rockies, the Midwest, the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, and even up in through the northeastern United States sometimes, which is why I have us in the slightly above average precipitation. All of these regions are going to have very active storm tracks heading straight through them, uh, which is going to allow for more precipitation, obviously, once it's all said and done, December, January, February. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our two separate moderately above average precipitation regions. So first things first, here's our first one for the Pacific Northwest and through portions of the Rockies, we are expecting a pretty active storm track that moves onshore to the Pacific Northwest. This has not changed at all since our last forecast. I'm just going to go out and say that. So I'm just merely showing this because it's the forecast obviously but I have not changed my opinion on this whatsoever the Rockies I think could have a lot of snow this winter especially earlier on they tend to get a lot so uh, I think it could be an active year for you guys and then we have our second above average precipitation region here and as you can see the upper midwest portions of the Ohio Valley the Great Lakes and then in through New England and portions of the interior northeastern United States we're anticipating all of them to have that moderately above average precipitation, which might in turn also mean above average snowfall for many of these regions within this darker green region. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at that exciting temperature forecast. And then we're going to move on, take a look at the snowfall forecast and finally the overall forecast. All right, now here we are taking a look at the above average temperature regions. As you can see from the southwest, well, and then in through the deep south and the southeast. It used to not extend into the southeast as much as it does now. I know that's going to disappoint a lot of you, but we are anticipating that southeast ridge to be a big factor this year. Uh, looking at the short range models, it's appearing to already make itself known uh, around now. We're starting to see signs that it's going to be around for the fall season, which also leads me to believe it will be a factor during the winter season as well. So I've extended those warm temperatures further up into the southeastern United States for that reason. Let's go ahead and take a look at our moderately above average temperature region here. And as you can see for California, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas, basically those same areas that were in the moderately below average precipitation are also going to have moderately above average temperatures. And this is just an area where we're more confident in those above average temperatures. Let's go ahead and add that slightly below average temperature region. And as you can see from the Pacific Northwest, where we've extended it further south in through the Rockies, the central United States, where we've also lowered it further south and then through the northeastern United States where we've actually receded it further north. I'm leaning more and more with every update here towards a more central United States cold winter 
Uh, it really is looking like that, and a La Nina would obviously lead me to believe in that as well. Let's take a look at the moderately below average temperature region, and this is just going to show us a little bit more about what I'm talking about. You can see that trough most of the time is going to be mostly for the central United States and then ridge up a little bit over the eastern United States, where again, that southeast ridge just looks to unfortunately be a factor this year. Uh, and also notice that Washington State, this is a new addition here, is in the moderately below average temperatures as well. And then let's take a look at the far below average temperature region. This is where we could see polar vortex make its appearance likely this year. Uh, I've seen signs that that's going to occur from Montana, the Dakotas, Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, Illinois, and Michigan. I'm expecting far below average temperatures. Again, this is very far west, and it's centered over the west, the central United States, and I really think that's how things are going to go this year, uh, and a little less cold for the eastern United States and the western United States. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at that exciting snowfall forecast compared to normal. All right, now we're starting things out with our above average snowfall here. And as you can see, it basically takes up all of those areas where we're expecting above average precipitation. I think that this is an area where most of these areas will see above average snowfall. Obviously, it's not going to be perfect, but the likelihood of you seeing above average snowfall is, well, above average if you live in this region, to say the least. Uh, and let's go ahead and take a look at the two moderately above average snowfall regions here. And as you can see, it's for those two moderately above average precipitation region. So basically, if you're in above average precipitation and below average temperatures, that's going to be the two only factors that I would use really to decide if you're going to be in the above average or below average snowfall. This is really just a reanalysis of the precipitation forecast and temperature forecast combined uh, to give you guys an idea of what the snowfall anomalies could indeed look like. So as you can see for that Pacific Northwest and through the Rockies region, moderately above average, as well as for the Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, and New England states. But a lot of the Mid-Atlantic as well is in that slightly above normal. I think you're going to be at least near normal, which is a huge, massive step above last year. So there is good news for all of us here in the United States. All right, now just real quick, here's our below average snowfall regions. And I understand that most of these areas do not ever get snowfall, but I just covered in everywhere that would have above average temperatures or below average precipitation or both. So as you can see, California, Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and then in through the deep south and the southeast, uh, a lot of these regions could expect slightly below average snowfall to none at all. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and take a look at that exciting overall forecast. All right, now here we are taking a look at that overall forecast, and there's a lot to go over. This one has changed significantly. I've used brighter colors this time around. I think this one looks a lot more lively. Uh, I decided to just change it up a little bit. As you can see, for the northwest, cold and stormy. It used to kind of just be stormy, but now we're anticipating a little bit colder than normal conditions there than what I was originally anticipating. Uh, so I think we could definitely, definitely be taking a look at some colder conditions moving into that region alongside those storms. To the south of you, hot and dry. Pretty self-explanatory. I'm expecting moderately above average temperatures alongside moderately below average precipitation. That just sounds like a recipe for a hot and dry winter, and it does get hot in those regions a lot of the time of the year. Obviously, if you're in a little bit of a colder climate, maybe not necessarily hot, but I know that a lot of these regions will uh, indeed see some hot temperatures at times. All right, now mountain snow there for that white region. That's pretty obvious. I don't need to talk about that too much, except for the fact that I expect above average mountain snow, actually. So not only are you, of course, going to see mountain snow, but you're also going to see more than what would be typical. Now, in that deep blue region, just to the east of there, cold and snowy. This hasn't changed much. I do anticipate that this area is going to see quite a bit of cold and quite a bit of snow, uh, to say the least. To the north of their Arctic invasions for that pink region, that's where we have those far below average temperatures expected, frequent Arctic invasions that are going to bring, uh, you know, very far below average temperatures, uh, possibly polar vortexes, but for sure up there for that purple region, I expect the polar vortex to make a very brutal uh, appearance every once in a while, possibly one or two or three times, which is above average anyway. Uh, so very, very much so anticipating extremely cold temperatures for those regions as is pretty typical, but not always the case. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that purple region there to the south of Arctic invasions, where we're expecting colder than normal conditions, nothing too spectacular there. 
Uh, to the south, we have Winter Battle Zone, which basically just means uh, the warm and the cold is going to kind of be fluctuating a lot there. We could see some icy, rainy, and snowy conditions. Uh, it's going to be a mess. That's where the warm and the cold battle it out, I guess you could say. Uh, and then there for Texas and a lot of the south central United States, warmer. And by that, I mean warmer than normal. Really nothing much to say. Uh, maybe a little bit drier as well. And then down there for the yellow region, we see Southeast Ridge. That means basically warmer than normal conditions are going to try to push their way up uh, the eastern and southeastern United States. That can expand as far north as into the mid-Atlantic and even the northeast at times uh, and even further inland as well. So it's going to vary a lot. This also can bring drier than normal conditions as well. As we can see up there for that red region up by the Great Lakes, we're expecting active lakes this year that are they're a bit warmer than normal. Uh, and with the way the cold's going to come in, I think we could see some above average lake effect activity. Last year, by the way, I was calling for below average lake effect activity because I had somebody say I call for that every year, but that's just not the case. Uh, we can see for that blue region, worst of winter. There, I do anticipate that that's going to be the most active storm track and the most above average snowfall out of anywhere, especially down there for Ohio and interior uh, upstate New York there, as well as western Pennsylvania, maybe even in through northern New England as well. It just really depends what that southeast ridge does because the storms are going to move around that southeast ridge. So if it's further south of the southeast ridge, that uh, that worst of winter region is going to follow suit. So that's why it's so finicky, and this is going to be, a, obviously by nature, it's going to be a little bit off. Uh, so it might be very, very close, uh, but this could be a bit further south, a bit further north. It could really, really fluctuate. I'm just going to say it. Uh, for that white region there, for the mid-Atlantic, more snow. And what I mean by more snow is I obviously didn't have a lot of space to write any more words in that little region. But I just wanted to say, more snow than last year, probably more snow than the year before it as well. Uh, those winters were historically low on snowfall. It is almost a guarantee that you will see a better winter than those ones. So I just wanted to say that because a lot of people are discouraged, uh, including myself. It just, it's, these past two winters have been awful. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys yesterday, who do you think the best film director of all time is? And Josh Kaleff, if I'm saying your name right, if I'm saying it wrong, I apologize, said Quentin Tarantino. And I just love uh, Tarantino films. Uh, and hopefully we get one more great one. He said he's only going to make 10 films. He's already made nine. So it's really sad that we're there towards the end. Honestly, I think he's going to make more than that, if you're asking me. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel. But especially our Diamond Patrons, Madbirds and Mark J. Alongside our Platinum Patron, Donna Carnes. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I'll see you guys in the next video.